we're going to go through some of this together. Uh, and, uh, you know, good news and bad news about this. Yes, there's quite a bit of stuff on there, but it's a good review over everything we've done. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even better news is, okay, you're going to be able to use this on the test Monday. Okay, so you're going to have all your rules, you're going to have all your stuff, you're going to have examples. I want you to do well. Don't lose it. Okay, now go ahead, write your name on it. Okay. Now, we will go through this. I will work, we will work some of the problems together, some of them. Okay, you can go back and, and do yourself. Okay. Uh, now, a couple definitions, and these are important. Where did I put my stuff? That was me going. Sorry. Okay, what is the coefficient? Okay. Okay, it's a number multiplied by a variable. Okay, it's a number multiplied by a variable. Okay, so now what's a variable? It's a letter that represents An unknown. A letter that represents an unknown. So, and an exponent, it's a number that represents how many times something is multiplied by. By itself. It's a number that represents how many times something is multiplied by itself. So if it's x to the third, that means x times x times x. Okay, now, I know they're all letters, but which letter represents the coefficient, a, b, or x? A, that's the coefficient. Okay, which one's the variable? B. B. And, and the X is the exponent. Okay, any questions there? Okay, I just want to look at a couple things on the next page. Okay, anything that's squared, that means 5 to the, like 5 squared would be 5 to the what power? 2. two. And that simply means 5 times 5, correct? And 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, 6 squared. Okay, I want to look at some of the negatives. Now, any time you have an even exponent, your answer is going to be positive, because a negative divide or negative times a negative is a what? Negative times a negative is a positive. Okay. Now all even exponents, like something to the fourth, something to the sixth, eighth, tenth, you know, hundredth power. Okay. Would your answer has to be positive? But if it's a negative to an odd power, a negative times a negative times a negative, that's three, which is odd, your answer will be negative. negative. Okay? So negative five times negative five equals positive 25. Something to the third power, or this word, keyword, cubed, that means it's raised to the third power. So this would be 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 to the third power is, anybody know what it is? 27. Very good. Now, look at negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 cubed, that's negative 3 times negative 3 times 
negative 3, which is... Now, is my answer going to be negative or positive? Positive. It's negative because the exponent is what? Odd. Okay, so negative 27. Any questions there? Now, other than squared and cubed, you know, they all say to the fourth power, that exponent of 4, fifth power, exponent of 5, 6, exponent of 6, so on and so forth. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and turn the page. I understand that. So for the sake of time, we're not gonna we're not gonna do everything. Now, if you look at number one, very good. Just count the number of x's. There's five of them, so that'd be x to the fifth. Number two, a to the third. Okay, b times b would be b squared. Then x to the x cubed or x to the third. Okay, now, how many Z's are there? Six. So, Z to the six. How many G's are there? One, two, three, four, five. So, G to the fifth. Kind of hard to see that, but that's all right. E to the seven. E to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. E to the seventh. F to the fourth. Very good. And then we have M squared. Very good. Okay, any problem going from expanded to, okay, now, look at 9. How many ABs do we have? 3. So that AB and the whole thing is raised to the third power. Here, how many XYs do we have? 4. 3X to the third. Negative 8A, put it in parentheses, to the fourth power. 4, X, Y, Z to the 1, 2, 3. And then 5A, parentheses, squared. Now, you will have to do a little bit of 15 through 20 on the test. You'll have to expand it and just show me that you know what it means. X to the 4. What does X to the 4th mean? Okay, it means x times x times x times x. Okay, a to the seventh. How many a's am I going to multiply together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can write 19, or let me go ahead and do 17 first. That's just simply y times y times y. Now, you can write 18, 19, and 20 a few different ways. Now, you could go 4x, 4x times 4x times 4x. But if it's a multiple choice question, you might see it like this. And this means exactly the same thing. That means 4 times 4 times 4, times 4, times x, 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 x. Okay, you see that? Good, yay, nay, maybe. Okay, 19. We have xy times xy, or... How else could I write that? How could I expand it further? How how could I go? X times X times Y. Very good. X times X times Y times Y. Very good. Same thing now. Or I could just do that part first. How many A's am I going to have? Five. So I could go A times A times A times A times A. Times a times five B's. Oops, I ran out of room. Okay, we're good up with expanding. Okay, and making them small. You will have a little bit of that to do on the test. Now, this page right here, it says, 
expand them, multiply them out. It's not on the test. So right now, today for the sake of time, let's not worry about it. Are we fine with that? Okay. Okay. For the sake of time, this area of rectangles, we're going to talk about it in a few other parts. Okay, and we've talked about a bunch, so just for right now, don't worry about that. Well, no, because the whole thing will fall apart. And, no, just. Now, I want you on this page right here. Okay, up at the top of this page, it says product of powers. I want you to write this. When you multiply like bases, you the exponents. Okay, now, when we multiply like bases, what do we do with the exponents? We add them. Very good. Okay, I'm going to work a few of these. I'm going to work a few of these, uh, and then I'll leave a few of them for you to do. For instance, number one, x times the like base is what? x. Add the exponent. 7 plus 2 is 9. Okay. Look at 4. Has a coefficient. Okay. Deal with the coefficients first. What is 3 times 4? 12. Three times, on number four. Okay. Now the like base is W. Add the exponents. How many do we have? 12 plus 2? 14. Okay. Okay. Then look at number eight. Okay. It has a length. Uh, 4b squared and the width of 2b to the third. Okay. Now, how do we find the area? What do we have to do? How do you find the area of a rectangle? Uh, multiply. multiply what? Okay. Length time. Width. Okay. So, deal with the coefficients first. What's 4 times 2? 8. What do we do with the uh, exponents on b? Add them, so that'd be b to the fifth. Very good. There's my area. You will see a few problems like this. Number eight. Okay, any questions on rule number one? Good there. Now, here's a couple more rules. Okay, we should know this rule now, right? I'm looking at you. Yes. What do you do when you raise a power to a power? What do we do with the exponent? Yeah. What do we do with them? Raise a power to a power. What do we do with the exponent? You multiply them. Very good. Up at the top, when you raise a power to another power, You multiply the exponents. Now, in here it talks about another rule, but I mean it's still the same rule. They just broke it up a little bit further. I'm not worried about that. That's the important thing. Okay? You look down here. Raising powers to a power. Okay, and he said we multiplied the exponents. So we have x. To the what? On number one. X to the six. Very good. Okay, now, on three, even though it's a number, it's acting as a base. Okay? Uh, what do I do with uh, the exponents? Multiply it. So that would be four to the what? Six power. In your calculator, once you have it like this, go ahead and expand it. You have your calculator out. What is 4 to the 6 power? 
4,096. Very good. Go ahead and expand it out when you can. Unless it's a huge, huge number like we dealt with the other day, you can just leave it at like 10 to the 11th power or whatever. Now, let's go ahead and do number 5. This is where some of you had trouble earlier. Okay? Anytime you're raising a coefficient to a power, raise that coefficient to the power first. For instance, 3 to the 4th power. Somebody help me out. What is 3 to the 4th power? It's 81. Okay. Now, multiply the exponents. 1 times 4. How many x's right there? 4. Good. Now, we have to raise 2 to the 4th power. What is 2 to the 4th power? Don't look at me. Use your calculator. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is, yep. 16. I know. I said that. Y to the what? How many Y's would we have here, guys? What? 4. Very good. Can I take this further? Yeah. yeah. What is 81 times 16? And I can't do that in my head. 1,296. 1, and y'all said that like it. Okay. Now, what, how, else would I, how would I write the rest of it? How about X to the 4? Y to the 4. Okay. Good on this. You have just three problems left on that page. Okay. Quotient of powers. We talked about this today. When you divide like bases... Very good. You subtract the exponents. Okay, and our favorite rule, I hope, or the easiest rule, the zero exponent rule. Anything raised to the zero power is one. There's one exception. What is it? What is zero raised to the zero power? Nope, zero. it's zero. That's the only exception. Anything other than zero raised to the zero power is one. Okay, now there's, uh, we just did these, so I'll be brief on here. Okay, now where's the x larger, top or bottom? Top, so be x to the what? Six minus three is three. Very good. Okay, look at three. Okay. Now, where's the x larger, top or, top or bottom? Right. Top. So we have how many left? X. X squared. Okay. How many y's? Where, or first of all, where does y go, top or bottom? Top. top. How many left? Four. Y to the fourth. Very good. And I'll go ahead and do four since it's a coefficient. Uh, you can do one problem. Sixteen divided by eight. What's that? Two. Where does the two go? Top or bottom? Top. How many x's are left? Where does it go? Top. So we have two x. Hi. Right, by the way, there's number two. What happens to the y squared? Okay. They cancel out or become one. Okay. So we have negative x squared left. There's your number two. How about that? There's your number two. Uh -huh. Okay. Real quick. Okay. Oh, there's a couple on the back. That's all right. I do want to do one of six and seven because you will see these. We have the area. 64x to the fourth, y to the tenth, and we have one of the sides. Okay. How do I find the other side? I have the area, and I want to find that. What do I have to do? What operation? Multiply, divide, subtract, add. 
divide. Thank you. So we have 64 x to the 4th, y to the 10th, divided by 2 xy to the 3rd. Okay. Coefficients first. 64 divided by 2 is what? 32. Where is the x larger, top or bottom? Top, so it's going to stay on top. How many are left? Three. Y, where is it going, top or bottom? How many are left? Seven, very good. Oops, you can't see that. 32, x to the third, y to the seventh. Now you can do number seven to get practice on those type of problems. Now, I just want to clarify something. Okay, when something cancels out, what does it become? One. Okay, it doesn't become, so many times I hear people say it equals zero. But what is zero times anything? Zero. So that's, now, because if we use our rule, y to the third over y to the third, what is three minus three? What's three minus three? Zero. So we have y to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is what? One. Okay. okay. Shouldn't be any problems. Three or four problems. Something like that. Now, this is one that you said you struggled with last time a little bit. The negative powers. At the top, don't leave negative Exponents. Okay. Now, simply, it's not, you cannot have a negative exponent. Okay. So what we have to do is what they call change the form of the base, which means if it's on top or in my numerator, I have to make it positive and move it to the denominator or the bottom. If it's on bottom and it's negative, I have to make it positive and move it to the top. There's only one of these where I have to actually use the negative exponent. Okay? But I'm going to go ahead and start here. Okay? I'm going to do it the way that the other teach. I mean, now, we should know right now that this equals 1 over x to the 4. Because it's bigger where? It's bigger on the bottom. Okay? Some teachers teach to go ahead and subtract 2 minus 6. What is 2 minus 6? It's x to the negative 4, right? Okay, so now what we'd have to do to make that positive, since it's on top, we'd have to make it positive and move it to the bottom. So 1 over x to the 4. Okay, the way I taught you, we just skip this step. Does that make sense? That's why I ask you, is it bigger on top or bigger on bottom? Okay, we good there? Okay, now, if you look at number five, that's the only one with the true negative exponent. Okay, and it doesn't matter when you do it exactly, but basically, we can do it, you know, we can do it right now. If we want to just take it and move it to the top, make it positive and move it to the top. And now, how many x's do I have now? Four. So I have seven x to the four, y to the four over y to the ninth. Now, is there anything left to do in this in number five? Is there a y both in top and bottom? Yes. Where is the y larger? On bottom. So subtract the exponents. So we have seven x to the fourth over y to the what? What is 9 minus 4? What? 5. Very good. Okay, so there's my answer. Okay, so does the, the negative exponent make a little bit more sense than it did? Kind of? Okay, well, if you need help with them, I will be more than glad to help you. Okay, then basically all you have to do Okay, there's how many problems are left for you to work? There's probably only one, two, three, four, five. There's probably like ten problems or whatever left for, left for you to do. 
But uh, any questions on this other than that? 